Frank, hi. Hello, hello, hello Devox. You hear me? Hello. Kiev is on the line. How are you doing? Yeah, very fine. And happy that I can join you at uh, Devox, my first Devox talk ever. So wow. I'm proud of it. <laughs> Congratulations. And in Thanks such a, a format. Yes, uh, it's a bit strange, this virtual event, but uh, I'm happy that the community keeps sharing all this knowledge uh, through this free event. It's, it's really amazing. That is true. I know that you are a professional in Raspberry Pi. And um, uh, which project do you consider the most fabulous in Raspberry Pi? Um, uh, Raspberry Pi, well, uh, actually, it's a bit strange to do Java on Raspberry Pi, but uh, that's part of the talk, of course. Um, I know it's it's used a lot. The the Pi's are also used a lot in 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 uh, in the professional environments as a test tool. For instance, uh, I work at Telefic Rail, and we use a lot of Raspberry Pi's where we simulate trains, for instance, uh, to test our software that we develop in these projects. So it's very fun. It's a cheap product, and you can do a lot with it. That's interesting. And also, I have checked uh, a little bit about you. So yeah, I we... know, <laughs> I know that you're a drum player. Is it correct? Uh, no, I, well, I try to do drums, but no, it's my son actually. And uh, ah. as a bit of a technical fan, I assist him in. In uh, yeah, he has his own YouTube channel, so uh, I invite everyone to join that channel. Uh, but uh, I combine my love for J Java Raspberry Pi with his uh, drum, and uh, we make something fun with it. Wow, I think that everyone now should check and go on YouTube and check this. Yeah, of course. Drum plays. <laughs> but okay, I will I... show you a little piece of him. Uh, great, awesome. We are waiting for it. Uh, are you ready for your talk? Uh, absolutely. Then go ahead. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, so let's have the presentation online. Yeah, okay, there we are. Um, I'm happy to be here and to present my Java and Java FX talk on the Raspberry Pi. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm Frank de Porte, I live in Belgium. Um, I do a lot of blogging on uh, webtechy.be and I started programming uh, when I was 10 years old. So uh, yeah, that's already 35 years ago. And it all started with this uh, Commodore 64, uh, a very cheap device. Uh, which allowed me to uh, not only program, but I even controlled my Lego trains uh, through this co uh, computer. At that time, it was uh, really a challenge to find the right hardware and how to do it. Uh, you needed to order books uh, from other countries. You need to pay. So that was all very complicated. And nowadays, with all this uh, online knowledge sharing and all the information that you can find and very cheap electronic components, uh, now again, you can do the same thing as I was doing 35 years ago. Uh, with this Commodore 64. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, now, how this Java on, on Raspberry, Star, uh, Raspberry Pi started is, um, oh, first some uh, information about uh, <laughs> myself more. I work at Televic Rail and we built these uh, screens, for instance, for uh, trains and metros and trams uh, where we uh, share uh, passenger information. And we use a lot of Java uh, also on the wayside and on the trains to bring real-time information to these trains and inform the passengers uh, as good as possible. So he really use a, a lot of Java and uh, embedded devices. Um, I'm also a lead coach for Coder Dojo. That's a club where we uh, uh, learn and, and inspire kids to get involved into technology, not really to make them programmers, but uh, to learn to work with computers and explore what is possible, uh, not only with software, but also with hardware. We use Arduino, we use Raspberry Pi, we use uh, Lego uh, Mindstorms. Uh, the kids you see here uh, in the front of this picture uh, are using Minecraft and JavaScript to program uh, uh, to build houses instead of putting them there block by block. Um, and at this Coder Dojos, uh, all the coaches are volunteers and they bring their own knowledge to this event. Uh, and that's where I met uh, the first time the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi because coaches brought these very cheap uh, devices to these events and showed what you can do with uh, a LED, how to blink a LED and how to control uh, uh, any kind of electronics. 
Um, and with these uh, tools that I had here, uh, I was trying to build something for my son. So indeed, he is a drummer and he has this uh, drum boot. And I wanted to have this touchscreen interface to control LED strips. Uh, and that's a small seven inch display controlled and connected to this Raspberry Pi, which has the relay board on it. Um, so you can have uh, switches to control up to 220 volts for these lights. Uh, very easily. Um, I also have uh, LED strips connected to an Arduino, uh, which is very easy to control with uh, some available libraries. And there's even a web server uh, integrated in this Java application so that we can trigger a red alert from everywhere in the house uh, that he knows that he has to come to the dinner table and we don't need to uh, yell at the stairs that he has to come down. Um, so I said before, he has a YouTube channel. I had to promise that I would mention it. <laughs> um, now, all these experiments led to uh, writing this book, uh, getting started with Java on the Raspberry Pi. It's available as an ebook on LeanPub and as a paper book on Elector. Um, and it's where I combined all these experiments and what I needed to learn myself to be able to program with Java on the Raspberry Pi and to control all these electronics. With inside the book, you will find a lot of examples um, from getting started, how you uh, put an operating system, um, how you control the pins, uh, for instance, some applications with Java FX, uh, controlling an 8x8 LED matrix display. Uh, there's also this little LED segment that you know from a clock. Uh, I, I go get the weather from the Open Weather API to show it on an LCD display. Uh, there's even a spring example. Spring is a bit heavy on the Raspberry Pi, but it definitely works. So here with some REST interfaces and a Swagger UI, you can control a LED and read the button state. And the last example, which I will also show, also show you in this presentation, is the Java FX user interface with the Mosquito Q to control a LED strip connected to Arduino all through Wi-Fi. So bringing together different devices into one network. I also had the honor to speak with a lot of uh, Java heroes uh, about what they think about Java, the current state and how it should or could be used uh, on embedded devices. Okay, next slide. Now, uh, back to the basic, what is a Raspberry Pi? Actually, it's a very small and cheap device, a full PC. Uh, as you see here, uh, it's about nine centimeters for the biggest one. And you have the small one, which is six and a half centimeters. Um, they cost from 25 euros up to uh, 80 for the biggest one. So the Raspberry Pi for the big one you see in the middle uh, is uh, very recent. It has uh, three versions with two, four or eight gigabytes bytes uh, memory it's a full pc in a very small form factor um, and you have a very small one and the, the right one is the special one is the compute uh, version the idea of this is that you combine it uh, with your own hardware uh, so you see that it has no connections at all so all the connections you need uh, you want in your project you have to add them on your own electronics board now uh, when i created this slide a few weeks ago that was the state uh, and now there is well, a few changes uh, on the 19th of October uh, I will always remember this date because it was my birthday uh, I think it's a coincidence but they launched the new compute module 4 so the same Raspberry Pi 4 the full uh, body uh, the full big board is now also available in a, a, a small form factor that you can again combine it with your electronics project and they have 32 versions of these board depending on how many memory you want it uh, on it uh, if you want Wi-Fi uh, on it, uh, all different options you can configure. And the price goes from $25 up to uh, $90. Um, at the same time, they announced uh, this uh, I.O. board. Uh, and the I.O. board, the idea of it is it combines, it gives you all the possible connections with the compute module 4. So you stack a compute module on top of it, and then you have network, you have USB, you have power, you have uh, different connections available here uh, so that you can experiment and make your own project with it. And uh, if you're ready, then you can uh, use this uh, base uh, compute module board uh, and make your own version out of it uh, that, uh, that uh, fits exactly in the project that you uh, want to build. 
And then last week, again, an announcement, the Raspberry Pi 400. Um, and the Raspberry Pi 400, it's actually, it was an existing keyboard that they reused. It has the same form factor, but um, it comes for uh, 70 euros and it has a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, integrated into it. So you see all these connections at the back. So you have network, you have USB, you have uh, two 4K display connections, uh, your SD card, all the pins of this Raspberry Pi, everything in this single keyboard. Now, um, where did we see this uh, before? Uh, this uh, small keyboard with everything uh, inside of it. Oh yes, indeed, 35 years ago, that was exactly what I was using when I started experimenting with software uh, and hardware with electronics. Um, now there is one big difference. This is how my screen looked on my Commodore 64, uh, 35 years ago with basic uh, programming code. Um, and this is how my um, Raspberry Pi 4 looks like. So it has a 4K display. Now it has even uh, two connections. So you can have two of these screens connected. And I did a lot of uh, the writing of my book on this Raspberry Pi. Uh, so you see, I have two Visual Studio Code uh, open. I have Arduino open, I have the terminal, I have. So this is a full PC, a full PC, which you can buy uh, for around 50 uh, uh, euros or 80 if you go for the eight gigabyte uh, version uh, of memory. Um, a very cheap device with a lot of possibilities. A question I get uh, asked a lot is why Java uh, on the Raspberry Pi uh, wasn't the Pi uh, meant for uh, Python? Well, actually, yes. So uh, when they designed the Raspberry Pi, they wanted a fruity name uh, like you had already Apple. Huh? Um, so they chose uh, Raspberry and they added the Pi uh, because it, yeah, it's the numeric value, but it's also Python related to Python. That was the idea. But to my opinion, Raspberry could also have been the Raspberry Java, uh, for instance, uh, because Java works just as well on it and you can do a lot of stuff. Um, why? Because you can, ob obviously, I will show you, um, and you will learn a lot, uh, especially if you work like me in a company where they combine software and uh, hardware. Um, it will really uh, help you to understand how all these uh, kinds of communication with hardware work and that you can uh, write better software. Um, Java is not dead, of course. Uh, that's a lot of discussion I hear online. Eh? Java, well, that's an old and a dead language. Uh, no, it's not. It has been the most popular language in the last three years uh, combined with C. Uh, there's one uh, slight problem. This is the TOB index of this month and Java moved from the second place to the third place because Python got a lot of uh, attention for AI. So uh, thanks to this talk and all these initiatives in, uh, in, uh, in the Java world, I'm sure we're gonna back to the first or the second position uh, next time in this, in this uh, index. Uh, what is also a bit straight, uh, a bit, uh, uh, funny is uh, a link I found uh, only two weeks ago about the eco-friendliness of Java. It seems that running Java is really eco-friendly. It doesn't use a lot of energy or electricity. So especially in embedded projects uh, where you use these uh, cheap and, and small devices that can be very important. If you compare Java to Python, uh, the amount of energy used for a similar function, there's a very, very big difference. Uh, isn't Java too old? That's another question. Uh, isn't Java much older than Python or JavaScript? <laughs> no, it's not at all. Uh, Java and JavaScript were first published in the same year and Python, uh, yeah, that's even older uh, than Java. Uh, and then you see that you had some other languages which uh, uh, were a bit mimicking what Java was doing or, or uh, a few years later. And Java is evolving fast. Since we have this six month release cycle, which started in 2018, we get a lot of uh, improvements, new functions, new features every six months. It's really a joy to uh, follow up on what is happening really in this Java world. Uh, and with this Java 16 and Java VIX, which uh, we will come back uh, later, uh, we will see that uh, new features are also coming for the embedded world to uh, be uh, to make uh, applications for embedded projects uh, a lot uh, easier and, and faster.
A little side note, uh, these uh, these charts uh, I was just showing you, I needed them for my book um, and you could make them with Excel or Photoshop, I guess. But uh, as a Java developer, I made them with Java Avix, of course. Uh, you can find uh, the code of these charts uh, as part of the book. Um, and you see that with uh, some very simple uh, Java enums and uh, a few hours of Java Avix coding, uh, I created these simple charts and just make screenshots for them. And if you don't believe that Java on the Raspberry Pi is a good idea, you can believe Oracle. Uh, I wrote uh, an article for the Oracle Java magazine uh, about uh, how to get started with this, and it's also part of this presentation, of course. Um, it's one of the most liked tweets of the Oracle uh, Twitter uh, handle uh, of this summer. So I'm pr pretty proud that I could even inspire some of the Oracle worlds that uh, Java on, on Raspberry Pi is really a good idea. Now let's get started. Um, so if you buy yourself a Raspberry Pi, you need an operating system. So you need a small SD card to uh, put it inside the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation has its own uh, operating system, uh, Raspbian OS. It's based on Debian um, and it has open JDK 11 if you go for the full version. Uh, they also have a 60-bit uh, work in progress version because with these new Pis with more memory, it becomes important to have a 60-bit uh, OS. Uh, they recently rebranded their OS to the Raspberry Pi OS. And on their website, they have this imager tool that you can use uh, to uh, burn this image to this SD card and you uh, are started in a few minutes. So if you select the full uh, Raspberry Pi OS or the Raspbian OS, which is uh, more known, uh, you get a lot of pre-installed tools. Uh, you see, for instance, for programming, this whole list of programs that you have available. Visual Studio Code is not part of it, but uh, since a few weeks, uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in this world. So uh, only a few weeks ago, Visual Studio Code announced a version of their program uh, designed or built for the Raspberry Pi. So if you go to the website and you select this ARM or ARM64 version, uh, if you have a Raspberry Pi 64 uh, version, um, you have this program just in a matter of minutes. I described this process, uh, how to install, but it's very easy uh, on my blog. Uh, and of course, in Visual Studio Code, you have this Java extension pack, which helps you to uh, do Java development uh, very easily. Now, um, as I told you, uh, OpenGDK 11 is pre-installed uh, in this uh, operating system. So uh, this is a fresh new Raspberry Pi. I just opened the terminal and you see Java min version. It's version 11, which is on there. Now, another question is why would you uh, start experimenting with Raspberry Pi? And here the magic word is the header. Uh, it's this 40 pins uh, that uh, is on top of the board and you can connect electronics to it. Um, a LED light, a button, but also much more complicated stuff. Um, to understand what's inside this header, what these 40 pins can do, I created a little uh, Maven uh, library. Uh, there's more info on my blog and it describes uh, the headers, what the functionality is of each pin and what functionality per pin is available. And uh, by using Java FX, I created this small application to uh, visualize uh, what's inside this uh, Java library. So uh, at the beginning, they start with an 80 pin header, but uh, an eight pin, sorry, uh, where you had five volt and three volt on a pin and then four input output pins to connect uh, devices. Now let's move a little further. They had a, a smaller than, now we are uh, at the 40 pin header. Uh, and here you have again, three volt, three and five volt, and you have a lot of connections. Some of them have a dedicated uh, functionality, but you can use a lot of them for very uh, different and uh, purposes. Um, so uh, as you can see here uh, in this picture, uh, there is a small board on top of it uh, that helps you again to uh, identify each pin and the number of each pin and what you can uh, do with it. But uh, very short, a GPIO, so that's uh, most of these pins are GPIOs. They are general purpose input output pins. That means uh, that uh, you can connect something to it and you have a state of one or zero. Uh, everything is one or zero in our computer 
world. Uh, that means it's a true or a false. And for electronics, that means uh, on this pin, it's either a 3 volt uh, 3 or it's 0 volt. Uh, for uh, a LED, that means on or off. For a button, it's pushed or released. So everything is uh, is again uh, back to a, just an electronic connection and 3 volt 3 or 0 volt. Uh, in the most simple state, it's a 1 or a 0, so you can connect a LED to it and put it on or off, or you can read a button. Huh? Um, but there are some other uh, protocols which can be used with these pins, I2C, SPI, serial interface. Uh, some of these examples in the book use uh, these protocols, for instance, to control this 8x8 eight eight, uh, LED matrix is done with uh, SPI. Uh, serial communication is used to read out the state of a temperature or a LED light measurement uh, sensor uh, through an Arduino and visualize in a Java FX chart. If you want to get started into this uh, amazing world of electronics, uh, buy yourself a starter kit. You find them from 20 euros and up on eBay. Just search for electronic starter kit. Make sure that you have a lot of resistors and uh, LEDs and um, this distance sensor is a very fun thing to, to use. Uh, then an, a servo or a motor and this LCD display. You will find them in a lot of different uh, flavors with or without a, a, a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. Um, just go out on eBay and you will find a lot of these. What we will be using in uh, this uh, presentation uh, is a LED uh, light. A LED light, you just have a plus and a minus connection and it gives you some light. Uh, there are other flavors like the RGB LED. The most simple one just has three pins, one for red, green and blue. And if you want white, you have to put power on all three of these pins. And you also have the LED strips. A lot of uh, electronics projects to get you started are with using LED strips. They are, they are very funny to work with and they give you a lot of uh, amazing uh, results. Uh, these strips are very special. So they have, uh, again, RGB. So they have three colors in them, but they have this very little chip inside of them. So you only have to give them power, a ground, and a command signal, one connection to control them. And you can address uh, each LED in this strip individually. So if you want to the fifth LED to be green, you can give it a specific signal to only uh, let up this uh, single LED. Um, I told you before, this uh, Raspberry Pi gives 3 volt 3 on a pin. Uh, so if you want to put it on, but most LEDs don't need that uh, amount of uh, voltage. So they need a lower voltage. And uh, we fix that uh, by adding a resistor in between. Um, and again, uh, to help you with this, I created a little uh, Java uh, library and a Java FX sample application because the re resistors in these kits, they have these uh, color bands to define the value. Um, and it's a bit difficult to calculate you need to, to know the formula uh, but each color value has a certain uh, each color has a certain value and a multiplier but uh, using these drop down uh, boxes uh, if you have a resistor like for instance this one we use here which has a uh, brown black uh, green and gold uh, if you select these colors uh, in this uh, in this uh, java fix application you see that it has a one mega ohm value. Um, so it's not the right one because uh, this other calculation below shows you with an input voltage of three volt three, like the Raspberry Pi, and a LED which only needs 2.2 volts and uh, two uh, zero, uh, ampere, uh, that we need a resistor of 55 ohm. Um, if we would use an Arduino, which normally operates at five volt, you will see that we need another resistor of uh, 140 ohms. Um, and most projects, I just use a 220, 220 or 330 ohm uh, resistor because that's uh, you find a lot of these in these uh, starter kits and your LED will be a little uh, less brighter, but uh, it will still lit up. Now for the first experiment, uh, we're going to use a button and a LED. Um, the button is just to read out a state of a device and the LED is to control the state of a device. You see that we go from a pin um, to a resistor uh, to that we have the correct voltage. Then we go through the resistor oh, oops, and then back to the ground of um, the board. And we have uh, here a 3 volt 3 coming out of the board. We go to the push, push button and back to one of the pins of uh, the Raspberry Pi. So what we are using here uh, is the 3 volt 3, the ground, and then two GPIOs to either read the state, uh, state of the button and control the LED. 
Yeah, we go from a uh, GPIO to the resistor to a LED and back to the ground, and from the 3 volt 3 to a push button and back to one of the GPIOs. It looks like this. Um, I use, uh, again, one of these boards uh, which connects easily between the Raspberry Pi and a breadboard and all the numbers, GPIOs here are in a logical uh, numbering. Uh, these breadboards are very easy to uh, experiment uh, and test some wirings uh, before you would make, uh, for instance, your own uh, PCB. Now, I was wondering how I was, I was going to show this to you, so I glued one of my breadboards to my screen. I hope I get a refund for this from DevOps. No, it was just a sticker. Um, and I made a recording of this. So what we're first going to try out is if our connections are okay, uh, if this really works. So we can just open uh, the terminal and type some commands. Um, first, we're going to tell our Raspberry Pi that we want to use pin 3, that's one of the wiring Pi numbers, um, as an output pin, and we uh, write uh, the value 1 to this uh, pin. So, and you see that the, the LED goes on, and we can put it off again and then toggle a bit. Isn't this amazing? With just a few wires, a LED, uh, which costs you nothing, uh, if just a few cents, you can already control uh, this light. Now, let's try the same thing with the button. So the button is connected to wiring pi number five, um, and we are going to read the state of it. So we tell our Raspberry Pi that we want to use pin five as an input pin, and that we want to read the state of it. It's zero, it's not pressed. So now if we press this button and we read it again, it's a one. Very basic stuff, but we are already controlling the outside world from our Raspberry Pi through the terminal by uh, putting on or off the LED and reading the button state. Now let's turn this into Java code. And for this first example, we're going to use a very basic approach. You see that uh, we are using the runtime uh, get runtime exec. So that means that we can just run this exactly same uh, terminal commands that we've just tried out before uh, and just run them uh, via Java. So first we tell uh, Java with Java that we want to use pin 3 as an output pin and then toggle 10 times between on and off. And because we are using Java 11, uh, we can just uh, run this from, uh, run this from uh, Java um, without needing to compile. So we just create a Java file and we paste this code in here. There's some extra logging, uh, but it's exactly the same code as in the slide uh, before. And now we can just run this file. We don't need to compile it. We don't need uh, Maven or Rail or whatever. We can just run Java and uh, this file. It needs a little bit of time because it actually compiles it in the background for us. And here you see it turning the LED on and off from Java. A very basic approach, but it works. And uh, for a lot of use cases, it would already be enough uh, for your first experiments. But let's bring in Pi4j. Pi4j is a project uh, which is aimed to uh, make it a lot easier for a Java developer to control the GPIO pins of uh, the Raspberry Pi. Um, let's look at this uh, drawing. So you have your Java application which uses the Pi4j library. Pi4j also uh, runs on your Raspberry Pi and talks to native libraries to really interact with the hardware of the Raspberry Pi. So it becomes a lot easier for you to write code to control uh, these uh, GPIOs and use them. Now, Pi4j uh, exists already a long time. Um, and uh, it was created by Robert Savage. He already started also on a version two some time ago. Uh, this version two is uh, Java 11, uh, uses the modular approach, uh, and it will support all Raspberry Pi ports. Uh, the native library also switched. So wiring Pi, which is now used in version one of Pi 4J and what we were also using in this example, uh, got deprecated last year. And uh, a new one, Pi GPIO, which has uh, the same functions, but um, better support for newer boards is now used in a Pi4j version 2. It has a reduced code base, this version 2, but it's work in progress. You can take a look at this website, uh, a sneak preview, let's call it, uh, because yeah, we're working on documentation on the code itself and on uh, releases, uh, which we hope to do uh, very soon. 
Now, uh, for this example, uh, we will also use a Java FX. Um, I hope every one of you knows about it. It's uh, a way to create a graphical user interface uh, with Java. Um, it's not part of the Oracle GDK since uh, Java 11. Um, and the main uh, management and development is driven by Gluon. Um, they are really pushing Java FX forward also for embedded and doing a very great work to make uh, Java uh, uh, right once run uh, everywhere uh, even more with bringing Java FX to mobile applications, um, to uh, mobile platforms, to uh, embedded platforms so that you really have this single code base that you can use for all devices. Now, JavaFX has a lot of components available to build uh, user interfaces. Uh, check out the tutorials site of uh, Jacob Jenkov uh, to find explanation of all the basic components that you have available here. But JavaFX uh, allows you to create a lot more and uh, a lot of developers have made uh, open source libraries which extends uh, this Java FX. So if you want to make a, a word-like application with that kind of menu, you have this FX ribbon. Um, Hans Solo Gerrit Grunwald uh, has Styles FX and a lot of other components. Uh, and this Styles FX is also something we are going to use. Uh, if you want to want uh, if you want to make games uh, with Java, then I can definitely recommend FXGL. Uh, it's a framework to um, create games, and we are also experimenting with it on Raspberry Pi, uh, and it gives very very nice results. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, Gluon is. Uh, uh, driving the, the Java FX development and they also have some uh, work ongoing for embedded specifically for embedded and for the Raspberry Pi and for uh, ARM processors um, so you see here that they have this di uh, direct rendering manager support so that you have uh, native applications running on the Raspberry Pi with Java FX uh, directly rendered to your screen uh, with maximum performance. Uh, and just to give you a small example, uh, SpaceFX is also a, a small game created by uh, Gerrit Grunwald as a demonstration of what you can make with Java FX in game development. And uh, this is a small video of it running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you see a lot of movement, a uh, lot of uh, objects uh, on the screen and still a frame per second of up to 60 uh, frame per second. So very smooth playback, uh, very smooth uh, player experience. Um, if you want to get started with Java VIX uh, on the Raspberry Pi, I can recommend uh, the Liberica EDK of Bell Software. Um, they have a version of the GDK which includes JFX. So it makes it a bit easier. You don't need modules or extra dependencies. You can just run uh, your uh, Java application with Java minus jar um, and then your application. Um, I use it a lot uh, on my Raspberry Pi for experiments. Uh, it's very easy to get started. Um, it will be better in the future if you use G-Link or GraalVM on the Raspberry Pi to have native images, but that's an uh, ongoing work in progress. Uh, so for now, you can use this Liberica or experiment with other stuff. Uh, getting Liberica on your Raspberry Pi is very easy with WeGet and then uh, install it um, and then just configure it that you want to use this version of the GDK. And if you then ask for Java minus version, uh, you have the 13 Bellsoft version, for instance. But they have uh, uh, releases for every version of the GDK. Now let's create a first application. Uh, is this Java FX dashboard uh, with a chart and, and a button and some other stuff? Uh, the sources you can find them on GitHub, and the full explanation is in the Java magazine of Oracle. So in short, I will just show you what it does. It's a Maven project, so we need this dependency to the Py4j library. Um, I use the version 1.2 because that's uh, perfect in our use case. Newer versions will be coming in the future. And we have this uh, GPIO factory and the controller, and that's actually our connection between Java and these uh, GPIOs. To have a let, uh, it's very easy. Uh, we have a digital output. And we ask our controller to provision one of these pins for us. We give it the wiring pi number, uh, in this case number three. We give it the name and uh, we start with the low state. So the LED will be off. And then turning the LED on and off is just 
a simple command, putting it at the high or the low state. And the same can be done for a button. So we ask our controller to provision a digital input pin, uh, wiring pi number five, and uh, the pull down, that is a, a way to use, uh, to define your hardware that you don't have toggles too fast between on and off if you press this button. Um, that's just a pull resistor that's uh, provided by the Raspberry Pi. And then we can attach a listener. So whenever the change the button state changes, we have this change event listener, which will be called uh, because it implements the digital listener. Um, and in this case, um, I use it to fill up a chart series. So I have this series and every time that the, the, the state of the button changes, uh, I add a, a data to this uh, series for the chart and I give it a timestamp and the state uh, of the button. And uh, in this project, we are using TilesFX, this library of Gerrit Grunwald. Um, so we want a switch button tile that we can put the LED on or off. So with some uh, very simple line, we can define this, uh, this tile. Um, and if the switch uh, state of this uh, tile changes, we will put the LED on or off. A bit the same approach is used for a graph. Uh, we want to show a graph with the state of the button. Uh, we give it a size and a name and we connect it to the events. Uh, so this data series of this uh, change event listener. Now, if you combine all this and comp uh, compile it with Maven to a jar file, we can, oops, we can just run it. And then you will see, yeah, first we get some output on our screen. There is the application and you see by changing the switch on the screen that the LED goes on and off. The button, the same thing. You see that uh, the chart changes whenever the button is pressed. Now in this application, I have a third component, which is this dead distance sensor. And by moving your hand uh, closer to this uh, sensor, you see on the top, uh, that the chart goes down. So this chart measures the distance every second. So here you see that we combine, uh, uh, it's a touch screen, so you can even use uh, the switch button by a touch event. So you see with a very simple Java code uh, and some very basic components that we can create a, a Java FX application which combines all this. Now for the next, uh, Example I want to show you, uh, we're going to use uh, Mosquito Queue. So uh, Mosquito Queue, it's a bit the same as Rabbit, ActiveMQ. It's a queuing system. So in this queuing system, uh, we have a central point, which is the queue, uh, a post box, you can call it. And we have a client which subscribes and says, yeah, give me all the messages of this type. Um, on the other side, we have a sender, which can publish messages of a certain type. And if the client asked for it, it will get uh, this message. Now that's a very simple approach. One sender, one client, you get connect them uh, one by one. Uh, but in our example, uh, we want to have multiples. So we want to have different publishers, different subscribers. Um, and the end result of this application is to show uh, a LED effect, a LED strip effect on, a, on an Arduino, but I can control it uh, through Java FX running on a PC or on a Raspberry Pi or on a combination of all those. So that's what we want to make. We have a PC with a web browser, so we can uh, go to a web page which is actually running inside a Java web application uh, to tell I want this LED effect on the strips. Um, or we can test it through a mosquito sub, just typing in some commands in the terminal. Or I can have a Java web plus uh, Java FX application on the other side, which does the same thing with buttons. And all this goes uh, through mosquito and the events arrive at an Arduino, uh, which is connected through Wi-Fi, which will control the LED strip. Now, 
we will use the Raspberry Pi as our uh, central hub, as the post box, uh, uh, the, the application, the Mosquito application is running on this uh, Raspberry Pi. Installing Mosquito is just a few lines of code and immediately you can uh, test it uh, from the terminal. So uh, if we uh, open one terminal and subscribe to a certain topic, we will uh, receive events or messages. Uh, and on the other side, we can publish to this mosquito uh, and send some commands. So you see that uh, all the messages from the lowest terminal arrive in the upper terminal. Is, as this is running, we can also use the same thing from a Java application uh, just by using the MQ to take client and the MQTT messages. And you see this little Java FX application. So this Java FX application is running on a PC and on the Pi, we have this terminal still open. Um, and you can see that we can send messages from this application uh, to the mosquito and see them arrive uh, inside the terminal. But we can also send a message from terminal, uh, see it again in our own terminal on the Raspberry Pi, but also see it uh, inside the Java FX application. So here we have a connection between a PC and a Raspberry Pi uh, communicating to each other through mosquito. Now let's add a, a user interface. Again, we are using Java FX. Uh, I have this very beautiful color selection circles, which is again uh, an open source project shared by uh, Gerrit Grunwald. Um, so here you can select from eight different LED effects uh, and some colors. Two colors because you have, can have a degradé uh, uh, color fade from one color to another um, in this uh, approach. And we also have uh, a website. So um, this is using Undertow. Undertow being part of this Java uh, application, uh, which gives us the possibility to start a red alert uh, through the web uh, page from anywhere in the house so that we can control this Arduino LED strip. Now, if we bring everything uh, together, uh, you see that we have this. So we have a PC. The PC is running the Java FX application on its own. We have uh, the screen in the background is the Raspberry Pi and we have the terminal uh, open, which shows uh, all the messages which are going uh, through the Mosquito. And here at the table, we have the Arduino, which is connected through Wi-Fi to this Mosquito and which is controlling uh, this LED strip. Now, if we start and look at what's happening, so you see that every push on the button uh, inside this application results in a message which is shown in the terminal uh, in, on the Raspberry Pi, and that the colors of the LED strip also change. The speed can be changed, and you have different uh, LED effects. And the same can be done through a web page, a red alert. So all controlled with Java, uh, simple Java uh, commands, MQTT, uh, Mosquito queue running on the Raspberry Pi, um, and all without having a lot of other functionality still available on the Raspberry Pi because this Mosquito takes uh, very few resources. Okay, um, almost finished. What did we learn? What did I wanted to show you? That Java and Java FX on the Raspberry Pi works. It's really a fun way of combining software and electronics and building projects. Um, a lot of what I've shown you already is uh, maker stuff. So you make it at home to learn new things. Uh, of course, uh, all this can become uh, commercial products. Uh, there is a lot of Raspberry Pi already in the commercial world uh, used in, uh, in, in electronics projects. Using this electronics is really fun to extend your knowledge because you will learn a lot of things. You will learn how to control devices, uh, different uh, communication protocols like this I square C and SPI, uh, each of them having their own benefits like speed or uh, uh, how many uh, devices you can uh, control with it. Because we are using Java, 
uh, we can have a big result with minimal code. Uh, we can use Spring, for instance, to have a, a REST API and have a Swagger on our device. Um, you can have Undertow if you want to have a very minimal web server. Um, and there's a lot to look forward to. So you have this uh, native uh, uh, new stuff going on with Graal VM, for instance. You have also native the, uh, uh, improvements for the performance of Java FX on the Raspberry Pi, direct rendering, for instance, and the animation speed. Pi4j, this version 2, which will bring a lot of new features and uh, ease of extension. And Java FX, of course, which is a very, very great tool to build user interfaces. If you want more info, I can uh, recommend you my blog, of course. I will also, uh, I published already all the links of this presentation this morning on my blog. So if you want to find more, uh, you can uh, just go to this website. Uh, I do uh, tweet a lot about Java, uh, Raspberry Pi and all related stuff uh, on Frank Laporte. Um, and I also write for fuj.io. So that's a very new website uh, sponsored by Azul. Uh, for friends of the Open JDK, uh, so uh, you can find a lot of articles by a lot of Java people uh, telling about all things going on in the Java world and tips and tricks to build applications to better understand how, uh, for instance, the, the, the evolutions which are ongoing in, in, in Java. Um, and I can only tell you this, build, experiment and have fun. Um, there can go a lot of things wrong. I blew up a few LEDs while writing my book, but uh, these are all very cheap components. So it's uh, more fun to break something even uh, and learn again uh, what you should not have done. If you have questions, there is a QA and a uh, after this session. Uh, I also want to give away some uh, few copies of my ebook. So if you tweet with Java on Raspberry Pi uh, and DevOps Ukraine in the next hours, uh, I select a few of them uh, and give you a free copy of the book. Uh, tweet what you want to build with Java on the Raspberry Pi uh, and what your dream project uh, would look like. Okay, I think I'm almost at the end of my time. And this is all I wanted to tell. Uh, let me go back to the Zoom. Frank, thanks very much for your exciting presentation. Was it a pleasure? Uh, it was fantastic, actually. It's, it's a bit a new world for most people, I think, to, to experiment with this electronics, but it's really a new world which opens uh, once you start doing this. That is true. And I'm asking uh, a lot of speakers today about next year, about advices for software developers. And I want to ask you, uh, what is your predictions for 2021? What will be in trends? Um, I hope, uh, I really hope that Java FX gain even more traction than it already does. It's such a great tool to build user interfaces to build mobile applications uh, really cross uh, device. You only need one tool, it's Java. We already know that we are all Java users uh, inside this conference, I think. Um, it's really one tool that enables you to, to really discover all these different platforms and build uh, stuff for these different platforms. So keep an eye on Java AVIX, uh, start using it, experiment with it, combine it with the Raspberry Pi, and I will be very happy to see what uh, is happening in the next year. Thank you for a great advice and for your talk. It was really exciting and we are honored to have you at the Vox Ukraine. And of course, we are hoping to have you next year offline. And uh, with that, I'm inviting you to the Q&A session and all our participants to join you to ask questions. I'm sure that they have a lot of questions after your presentation. And with that, I also um, wishing you a great day and uh, great time. Thank you. Same for you. And thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.